All right, I think we're ready to get started. And then we'll bring this uh, to order here. Uh, and approval of summary minutes for the October 1st, 2013 regular meeting. Uh, any discussion on it? If not, I'll take a look at a motion. I'll make a motion we approve the summary minutes of October 1, 2013 regular meeting. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Moving forward. Go to public hearing items. Number two, application PDD 13222A, filed by Kansas Wesleyan University. We'll hear a report from staff. Dean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're going to have a uh, large number of slides and graphics for you, and we're going to address the plan development district application, and that's going to focus on the actual improvements that are proposed on the property in question, which is, as you're familiar, bordered by South 4th Street on the west, Claflin on the north, Osborne on the east, and Cloud Street on the south. And so um, this first application is for approval of plan development district, which involves a, a zoning change to plan development district and also the improvements proposed um, within that district. And so you can see um, the area in blue on the map is property that is owned and used by Kansas Wesleyan for their university related functions. And they own more property than what is depicted on this map, but these are the portions that are zoned U for university use and the request area there you can see is currently zoned university today. We have two background items that we focused on in our background report. One was to make sure that the Planning Commission understood that the uh, plan is to physically remove or demolish the existing Glen Martin Stadium structure and it is a uh, heritage conservation structure that proposal for demolition has been reviewed by the Salina Heritage Commission. It was reviewed on the 14th of August, and they approved a certificate of appropriateness to allow the demolition and removal of the Glen L. Martin Stadium grandstand structure. And they had one uh, condition, and that, that condition was that there be uh, some sort of monument or uh, commemoration of Glenn Martin and his association with the original stadium and the Works Progress Administration program under which that stadium was built. So the effect of that action is to authorize the uh, city's building official to issue a demolition permit for the stadium grandstand structure and the two stone ticket booths at the entrance to the stadium. The second issue that we had in the background report, you may recall um, that there was some discussion in 2012 about a desire on the part of Kansas Wesleyan to reinstate uh, advertising signs on the rear of the Kansas Wesleyan Stadium scoreboard that, that faces Cloud Street. And the Planning Commission approved a uh, a text amendment that would allow for that that was ultimately approved in December 2012 by the City Commission and the Planning Commission also considered Kansas Wesleyan's companion application for a conditional use permit for that. As we pointed out on page 5 of the report, your approval for the scoreboard advertising signs was for a five-year time period subject to renew, review and possible renewal by the Planning Commission at that time. At the uh, time that that was considered, the plans for uh, modifications and improvements to the sports complex were not all that well developed and it was not clear, and it was not clear actually till we sent out your packet that it appears, and we'll, we'll wait to hear from representatives of Kansas Wesleyan that as part of this, the existing scoreboard would be removed and replaced by a newer structure. And what, what that would mean in relation to that is that some of the aspects related to square footage, height, setback from cloud, those things under which that conditional use permit was approved uh, may be changed. And so that may result in the need to 
amend or modify that conditional use permit for the signage. Um, wanted to clarify again that any scoreboard that serves a stadium that has advertising that is directed towards the spectators in the stadium that's considered part of the um, scoreboard and is not considered a sign. It's the aspect of placing signs on the outside of the scoreboard oriented to Cloud Street that made it an advertising sign. So um, one thing we will want to clarify at today's hearings is, is whether the existing scoreboard would remain, whether it would be replaced, and whether it would be replaced in a different location with a different size and height of structure. Um, the two main purposes or differences between our standard zoning districts and a plan development district is the, the PDD process allows you as a planning commission to create a customized zoning district for a proposed development and allows you, allows the applicant to request and you to approve deviations or exceptions to standard zoning requirements and it also allows you to attach conditions of approval to any zoning change. And it does require the applicant to submit a site plan as part of the requested zoning change. And your review of that site plan, you can address things like uh, location and type of buildings, surface of driving aisles, parking areas, utilities, site drainage, and landscaping. As we pointed out to you, the existing stadium and grandstand was constructed in 1940. Um, Kansas Wesleyan has played its home football games and soccer games at Salina Stadium since 2006. Sacred High, Heart High School continues to play their games uh, on this field. Um, Kansas Wesleyan, working with their design professionals, has determined that the existing facility has outlived its useful life. It would be cost prohibitive to retrofit and it's not functional in its pro uh, present location, configuration, or physical condition. And as you're well aware, they've unveil, unveiled plans to construct a new $7.5 million on-campus athletic complex, which Dustin has. This is a, a conceptual drawing that was in the paper and gives you an overall view. But <clears throat> the uh, primary aspects of this would be a new grandstand with metal bleacher type seating a new one-story press box, new concession areas and restrooms, an eight-lane track that would circle the field, an expanded locker room facility in the northeast corner, and a practice field that would be located in the southeast corner. And the plans are that all of the uh, surfaces there would be an artificial turf uh, playing field for both the playing surface and the practice surface. As part of the project, there, a, a monument to Glenn Martin and the history of the original complex is proposed to be erected and displayed in the area next to the grandstand. Um, as you're aware, the surrounding uses are St. Mary's Church, Elementary School, and Sacred Heart High School to the south, and residential neighborhoods to the north and east. And as we pointed out, the original concept, we looked at this, it's zoned. U for university functions that uh, allows for athletic facilities but as we reviewed the plans more closely we found that there were some unique design and layout aspects of these facility improvements that did not fit within the parameters of the U zoning district and so um, coupled with the changes around the perimeter streetscapes we recommended to Kansas Wesleyan and their design team that the PDD review process be used to address these design changes. So again, we're dealing with the use that's already permitted. Um, one of the aspects of the university district is it does require a 50-foot building setback. And we wanted to uh, indicate for you, and we've summarized, we're over on page 8 now, that the uh, setback proposed from 4th Street to the stadium face would be 15 feet from the lease line on 4th Street. And with the various changes over on Osborne, uh, with the locker room and field house facilities, Dustin point out to you over here, uh, the last version that we had would reduce 
the setback from Osborne Street um, from the required 50 feet to 4 feet. And so um, we would want to hear um, from representatives of Kansas Wesleyan and their design team um, whether there are alternatives to the dimension of this, whether it really needs to be brought that close to Osborne to make it work, but in the final result, the proposed setback from 4th Street is 15 feet and this future building addition would be located as proposed 4 feet from the Osborne Street property line. As part of the uh, repackaging of this block, the east-west dimension would be 548 feet from 4th Street over to the uh, west line of Osborne and the depth would be 580 feet um, from north to south. The total lot area that we're working with here is 7.42 acres. Only 9% of that block would be covered with structures um, that would have rooftop runoff. One of the things we uh, wanted to determine was um, we've heard a lot of input about off-street parking. If this were built as a new freestanding stadium, um, the parking requirement would be one parking space for every three seats. But since we're dealing with an, a, an existing structure with an existing seating capacity, only the increased seating over and above the existing capacity would be needed to be accounted for. And um, in this case, the first phase would have no net change in seating over what the existing stadium has today, but it would be um, repackaged in a different format and the stadium will not be in the exact same location that it is today. The other item I would note, um, and it has not been initiated by anyone who has property in a university district, we did some work on our public use district, our residential districts in regard to electronic changeable copy message center type signs. We wanted to point out that at this time the university district does not allow for those types of signs and there would have to be some form of text amendment initiated uh, to affect such a change. The other thing about the university district, it is actually exempt from our front yard landscaping requirements and the rationale for that is that most campuses by their very nature incorporate landscaping into the campus setting and also the university district has a 50 foot uh, building setback. So as we pointed out, the two modifications, and I'll have you go to the site plan, Dustin, it has the red line on it. I think it's number seven. The, uh, this red line here represents the 50-foot building setback line, and so you can see the stadium, as proposed, would extend into that. Instead of 50 feet, a 15-foot setback is proposed. And again, this portion of these improvements would comply, but if this wing were built in the future, as proposed, it would extend to within four feet of the Osborne Street property line. So again, the, uh, the request to create a plan development district is to provide some flexibility into the process from our basic zoning standards. However, it does require notice and a public hearing and presentation of a plan. So I, I think it's been agreed that the uh, block bounded by 4th Street, Claflin, Osborne, and Cloud has been the home to athletic fields for over 70 years and it's been shown to be suitable for that use. Uh, certainly the neighbors are used to its presence. Um, as far as the character of the neighborhood, uh, the, the bro this block and the property to the west is zoned university. As you saw, we have the St. Mary's and Sacred Heart complex to the south and the uh, residential neighborhoods ring this area on the north and over here to the east as well as over into the southwest. Um, again, we are not proposing to introduce any types of uses that are not already allowed or permitted under the university uh, zoning classification. 
as far as public utilities and services, the uh, needed public water and sewer and franchise utilities are all in place to serve this proposed facility. There are no public investments for public utility or public improvements that are needed to facilitate this project. Uh, we uh, pointed out to you that there was a traffic analysis done and that formed the basis for the recommendations regarding traffic. And uh, as we point out in the report, reasons provided by Wilson and Company for converting Osborne Street from two-way to one-way southbound instead of one-way northbound are that the traffic volumes on Osborne are low and there's not a predominance of either northbound or southbound flow at this time. They're stating that the southbound travel um, provides a greater ease of circulation around the block through a series of right turns, which reinforces the existing and proposed parking pattern, particularly the proposed angled spaces on Claflin. Uh, they state that making Osborne one-way southbound would eliminate the northbound left turning movement from Cloud onto Osborne in front of the St. Mary's Elementary School and from the fire department or emergency response uh, aspect. Um, it would facilitate emergency vehicle access coming from fire station number two on South Santa Fe and going southbound or um, trying to get to Russell Avenue. I think the primary downside um, to making Osborne one way southbound as proposed is that uh, it's kind of counterintuitive for most drivers. Um, as you can see from the profile, this is the proposed fence on the east side of the sports complex. This would be a five and a half foot curbside sidewalk. This would be a section of street that would be 29 feet wide, 20 and a half feet for a travel lane, and eight and a half feet set aside on the left hand side for on street parking. Again, the, the parking would be on the left hand side of the road, which would be legal but somewhat counterintuitive for most drivers to, to park on the left hand side. Um, there would be a number of signing and striping changes that would need to be done to convert that to one way. Um, there's also um, some discussion about the uh, Osborne and Cloud Street traffic signal. As a southbound street, essentially that traffic signal could be left as is. Um, if we look at the comprehensive plan, then the, uh, that is supportive of public and semi-public facilities in this location. So again, to summarize, the uh, facility improvements would be construction of a new 224 foot by 42 foot wide stadium grandstand with 2,000 seats in phase one and possible future expansion to 3,000 seats. Construction of a fenced-in hardscape plaza along the east side of 4th Street and so uh, that, that would be a, a fenced-in plaza area that would be east of the grandstand and about a 15-foot width over in this area here. The uh, construction of an eight-lane track that would surround the uh, field. Construction of a 5,000-square-foot home locker room in the northeast corner of the block and renovations of the existing building to serve as a field house building with possible future additions on the east side. In installation of artificial turf practice field in the southeast corner and installation of an ornamental wrought iron fence featuring brick pilasters around the perimeter of the block. So um, Dustin, you've got the elevations there for the grandstand uh, building. The uh, plan would be that the, the back of the stadium would face South 4th Street. It would be 224 feet long, 43 feet high. It would be painted metal with, there would be a, a 10 foot brick wainscoting around the base. Um, the uh, plan is that the uh, renovated field house would have painted metal siding with also a brick wainscoting around all four sides. The proposed height of that building is 14 feet. And then um, this is kind of a typical elevation drawing which we 
may be able to blow up for you if you have questions, but it would be a six-foot wrought iron fence with two-foot masonry pilasters that would be installed all around the perimeter of the block. Um, so as far as I think we will, we will just walk you around the, the block starting on South 4th Street. We would have a 15-foot fenced-in pedestrian plaza. And outside the fenced area, the applicant's proposing to move the east curb line of 4th Street four feet, or excuse me, seven feet along here. That would create a buffer between the travel lanes and the plaza fence. This would reduce the driving width on um, <coughs> the street from 32 feet to, in essence, 25 feet. And it's our understanding that this strip, you would have a curb line and then a, a concrete strip and then the fence. The representatives of the applicant can uh, clarify that. On the Claflin Avenue frontage, they're talking about 39 angled parking stalls in the right-of-way along the south uh, face of the street. And there would be a property line sidewalk between those stalls and the fence line. Um, on Osborne Street, they're talking about reducing the paving width from 37 feet to um, 29 feet with Osborne being converted to one-way southbound and uh, with parking on the left-hand side adjacent to the residences. Then we're also talking about a five-foot curbside sidewalk the entire length. Um, staff had taken note of some power poles on the west side of Osborne that we felt could interfere with sidewalk construction. Um, we've been informed by representatives of Wilson and Company that those poles are temporary and would be removed and that they would not interfere with construction of the sidewalk. As far as the Cloud Street, there are no changes being proposed. Um, we pointed out to you that we took an inventory of parking at the uh, Kansas Wesleyan campus and we uh, determined that based on all of their office, classroom, dormitory, and student activity spaces. Under our ordinance, they would need 749 parking spaces. And uh, with their recognized on-street parking on Claflin and Cloud Street and some satellite lots along with their on-site lots, they currently have 782 spaces. And that includes a shared parking arrangement that they have with St. Mary's church and school on the south side of Cloud that makes 170 spaces available to Kansas Wesleyan. So essentially we have determined that 33, there are, the surplus parking is 33 at this point and that this plan that's presented would add 39 on-street spaces on Claflin and four additional spaces uh, in the northeast corner, which would give us a total of 825. We have been um, informed that the, t the 2,000 seats proposed in phase one would essentially be a match of the existing seating capacity. So what we would want to make clear in any action or recommendation today is that the, the approval at this point in time would be for phase one of the stadium which is uh, a capacity of 2,000 seats and that any additional uh, seating capacity is added to the stadium, then we'll have to address uh, off-street parking again at that time. Um, as to the residential parking on the east side of Osborne, you have in your packets a summary uh, prepared by the planning staff. We went out and looked at um, all nine properties on Osborne and we prepared a summary for you and found that only two of the nine are deficient as to required off-street parking. And we believe the situation at 1611 Osborne can be addressed fairly easily. Therefore, um, in our desire to retain um, on-street parking on the east side of Osborne, that would primarily be a benefit for guests and visitors and the parking would not be needed solely to provide required parking for residents that live in those homes.
So your uh, review procedure is that we have reviewed the site development plan as a city staff to com determine compliance with city ordinances. Um, a site development plan has been scheduled for your review today at a public hearing. Um, and your role today is to prepare and transmit your findings to the city commission and to the applicant um, as to whether you think the plan as, as submitted should either be recommended for approval or disapproval as submitted or you could recommend approval subject to certain revisions or conditions or you could recommend that the plan be resubmitted after substantial revisions are made. So on page 18 we have our staff recommendation and if after the hearing and any questions that you have you think that all site development plan and traffic circulation issues have been resolved to your satisfaction then we would recommend approval of the creation of a plan development district for this block with condition one being that the uh, use of the property be limited to athletic facilities serving Kansas Wesleyan University that um, we've identified for you in in section two there the two reductions or uh, modifications that's been requested to go from 50 feet to 15 on 4th Street and to 50 feet on Osborne to as required to 4 feet and uh, you would have the discretion to grant them a reduction from 50 feet to some other number on Osborne if you think four feet is just too close to that property line. Um, condition three deals with Kansas Wesleyan's responsibilities and that would be to construct all public street and sidewalk improvements depicted on their plan and that would include the, the buffer and new east curb line on 4th Street construction of a separate left and right turn lanes at the 4th and Claflin intersection, construction of the recessed parking stalls on Claflin if it is approved through a license agreement by the City Commission, and construction of an abutting five-foot property line sidewalk. They would be responsible for making modifications to Osborne to convert it from 37 feet two-way street to a 29-foot one-way southbound street with one way with parking on the east side and they would be responsible for construction of a five-foot curbside sidewalk along the west side of Osborne Street from Claflin to Cloud. Um, items four and five indicate that you as Planning Commission can make recommendations but do not have the final say on the parking in the right-of-way on Claflin Avenue and then uh, the other item, Dustin, on, on the site plan is if you could scroll it down just a little, or the other way, I guess, to see more of Claflin. There is a storm sewer pipeline that's buried that goes right through this area. The proposed um, fence is uh, located not over, but in very close proximity to that storm pipeline. We have determined that the uh, storm pipeline, the top of the pipe, is 2.78 feet below the ground elevation, which is not overly deep. Um, Dustin, if you could go to the Claflin cross-section, which I think is 13. One of the things we asked uh, Wilson and Company to provide was a cross-section for Claflin and this this is the traveled way this is the angled spaces this is the buried pipeline which is actually a little closer to the surface and we asked um, them to clarify whether the uh, plan for the north segment of fence included the brick or masonry pilasters as with the other sections I think the primary concern is that the uh, footings or supports for those Pilasters would be very close to the storm pipeline and if the city ever needed to um, access that it's very likely that the uh, the masonry piers would have to be removed in order to get at the pipeline 
So one of the things we wanted to do is that it would be addressed through item five there, that there would be a license agreement between the city and Kansas Wesleyan, um, whereas Kansas Wesleyan would agree to, on their own, remove or relocate the fence in the event that we need to make repairs or replace that storm sewer pipeline. I think what we wanted to make sure is that everybody understood that if you put 14 brick columns there over that pipeline, then that's 14 brick columns that'll have to be potentially removed or um, could be damaged in some way by the need to get to the pipe. So that can be addressed through the license agreement, but we wanted to make sure that everybody understood that. And, and one option would be to dispense with the brick masonry supports along the Claflin frontage where it is over um, the pipeline. But we did want to make clear that as proposed, there would be 14 columns. And so Dustin, if you could go um, back to the site plan again. So is there a way to blow that up at all? So each one of these is proposed to be a, a masonry column and then the fence would come down this way and, and then go back over. But this segment here would be very close to being placed over that pipeline and we just wanted to make sure that everyone clearly understood that that can be allowed there through an agreement but that the uh, there are brick posts and that the uh, top of the pipeline is is less than three feet uh, below the grade. Item number six is would require Kansas Wesleyan to submit a landscape plan for this northeast corner that uh, between the parking lot and the abutting residences across the street. And uh, number seven requires the submittal of a site lighting plan and cut sheets um, just to give staff an opportunity to review the light fixtures for the stadium and practice field to make sure that we don't have light spill that might um, not be well received by neighbors. And then uh, item eight there is that uh, development of this block be completed in accordance with the approved site plan, building elevation and ornamental fence elevation drawings. In other words, what, what you see, what is presented is what you get. Um, the alternatives to recommending approval of the plan as submitted would be to recommend approval subject to certain revisions being made to the plan example that I gave was if you don't feel comfortable with the addition being four feet from Osborne, you could do ask them to revise that and um, either reduce the dimension or find an alternate location. You could postpone consideration of this item and continue the public hearing if you think there's still unresolved site or tra traffic circulation issues. Or you could recommend denial of the application altogether the city attorney would be available to assist the commission with developing and articulating findings in support of this recommendation as the findings that we have suggested would um, suggest approval of this request. So you've got a lengthy report and lots of drawings, but we, we tried to boil it down to explain what was happening with 4th Street, what was happening with Claflin, what was happening with Osborne, and that there are no changes proposed along cloud. So with that, I would address any questions you have about the proposed facility improvements. Any commissioners have any questions for staff and dean before we hear from the applicant? Hearing none, I will remind everybody this is a uh, public hearing. We want to hear from everybody. Uh, obviously, we love to see this much participation on something that's there, whether it's for it or against it. I would remind we will hear from the applicant, um, which is one of the most important people who can answer some questions for us and the concerns that we have. When we do open it up to the public, we do want to hear from everybody, but we hope that you would uh, understand that there's a large group. Most everybody wants to speak and limit yourself maybe to five to seven minutes. And, and um, again, we want to prove whether you're for it or against it. We'd love to hear that to uh, help do that. Dean also wanted some clarification that we're just making a recommendation 
that it must still move forward to yes, the city commission. You'd be making a recommendation as to this plan and the plan development district that would go from here to the city commission. Wonderful. And awesome. then we would, for the benefit of the applicants, we uh, will put up any graphics that you would want to see up there. Um, if you want to focus on any one of them, we'll put that up and you can just direct us as what you'd like to see on the screen. And also for the clerk, if you could uh, state your name and address, it helps out much uh, better for her to keep accurate notes. So at this time, I'd like to hear from the applicant. Good afternoon. I'm Matt Thompson. I'm the president of Kansas Wesleyan University at 100 East Claflin Avenue in Salina. Uh, we are very pleased to put forward this proposal today. We think it's an exciting project, not just for Kansas Wesleyan, but for the Salina community. Uh, we have been a good partner, we believe, with Salina for 127 years, and we think this is just an extension of that ongoing partnership. Obviously, there are tremendous benefits to the institution for this proposal, uh, but we also, as I said, believe there are uh, benefits to Sacred Heart, but also to the community at large and the abilities of what we can do with this new site here. Uh, we are asking for these changes to make sure that we can appropriately accommodate the needs to use this property the best way it could possibly be used. Uh, and that's why we put forward these proposals for some of the variants and the requests that we're making. Uh, this has been an ongoing conversation, um, some would say for five or 20 years, but I've been here for six months. Uh, and it's been an active mm -hmm. conversation in the last six months to make sure that the project um, is scalable, is doable, and benefits uh, all those needed. One of the things we heard early on was the request for a track. And so part of the request here is a need for a little more space north and south as well as a bit to the east and the west and that's why we had the request uh, for some of that property uh, space along uh, Claflin as well as on Osborne. Um, we initially proposed as you may remember that it would be Osborne southbound uh, with no on-street parking but in being uh, a collaborative and talking with our neighbors and working again with the city planning and with the fire department we've looked at ways to tighten up our land so that we can get more uh, we can gain enough space on Osborne so there could be both on street parking and the 20 foot and a half uh, right away driving area that the city and the fire department would need um, and so in doing that we think we have been uh, accommodating and, and and really in a partnership with others to make sure this is the best project uh, that benefits everybody. Um, those are my general opening comments. I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, Rick Green from Wilson & Company Architect uh, is here to answer any further questions if you get too difficult or too specific. Uh, so, Any questions for the applicant in general? Of I have a general question. How many events per year would attract a thousand or more people to this facility? Optimistically or realistically? <laughs> yes, <laughs> both. <laughs> you know, right now we average at about a thousand um, spectators at Salina uh, mm -hmm. High School, when we, uh, Salina Central, when we compete with football there. Uh, when we have soccer matches, we're t which let me just say that probably about seven games a year. Um, and then with uh, soccer, my guess is uh, very rarely do we ever come close to a thousand. Uh, in terms of Sacred Heart, I don't know what their attendance is. 500? Oh, three to 500. From, so mm -hmm. uh, again, from Sacred Heart standpoint, I don't think they're looking at 1,000 spectators. Now, optimistically, the football program grows, soccer grows, people begin to, wanting to attend events at such a great facility. We hope that will grow, but I don't think that's a short-term um, problem that we're going to start to grow above that 1,000. So probably never more than, or not in the, in the near future, probably not more than 10 to 12 units. Events a year that would be that's a fair fairly big and really generate traffic. That's exactly right. Any other questions? Thank you for your opening remarks. We may need to call you. you up later on for Absolutely. anything. Again, it is a public hearing at this point. We will take all information. Um, and if we have any questions, we can go back to city staff this time. So if you have any comments for or against it, would love to hear any comments that the uh, general public would have. Please approach the podium. Don't all do it at once. State your name and address. I would share that when we got the uh, revised plan that did provide for parking uh, along the east side of Osborne, we 
got that information to some of the owners on the east side, which they looked at that as as good news and and uh, addressed probably their major concern about the future status of Osborne, so that may account for part of the lack of feedback, but we did have some dialogue with those owners on the east side. There you go. Makes sense then. Okay. Well, at this point, last call, and we'll close the public hearing, bring it back for uh, discussion. Before we close it, I would like to see if the applicant or any, uh, the architect and anyone associated has any comments about the business about the sewer line and the brick uh, above it and potential ha potentially having to move it. I'd just be interested to hear whatever comments they might have. Hi, my name is uh, Rick Green. I'm the uh, architect uh, with uh, Wilson Co Company. And uh, first of all, I, I want to thank you all uh, and staff for being uh, such a great uh, resource for us to work together for uh, this really exciting project. Uh, and as a representative of Wilson and Company, who started our company here in 1932, not quite as old as Kansas Wesleyan, but we're uh, very proud to be associated with the project. Um, I have to confess, sir, I wasn't listening very well when you posed your question to me. I was talking to a staff member, so just if you I wasn't quite any, sure what your question was. Just if you, you had, had any general comments about the, the feasibility of the uh, the placement of the sewer line and potential difficulty with the fence and perhaps having to move it. Uh, the question with with regard to us being able to move the fence, right? Or we we have it, you know. Um, we understand that uh, we're responsible for any renovations that would need to be made to that that pipe. Uh, it's a fairly new uh, pipe, um, so hopefully, it'll uh, it'll be a while before that ever has to be dug up and replaced again. But we've uh, worked with the university to make sure they're crystal clear that um, all of the responsibility on removing and relocating that uh, fence is the universities that they're willing to accept that. We have talked about replacing the pilasters with uh, just uh, having the entire fence be a wrought iron appearing uh, structure. Um, but in uh, keeping with the character of the brick and mortar mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, construction of the university and um, uh, they really would like to stay with that theme for the entire perimeter of the uh, property. So at this time, we'd like to s keep that um, as part of that design. We may uh, opt to perhaps space the pilasters out a little far further there, um, but uh, we'd like to keep the, the pilasters right now if we could. Okay, so it's a risk that the university is willing to take. Absolutely, yeah. yes. There's, okay. uh, there, there's no problem with that. Rick, do you know what the current proposed spacing is between the various support posts? Uh, we haven't indicated that yet. Um, we're working with the university on the budgets for that right now. Um, it would probably be in the neighborhood, well, the further spacing would probably be a 50-foot spacing. Um, but, um, and then in other areas, uh, we may go less than that, but I, I don't think it'd be much further than 50 feet apart. So. It, it's conceivable that with good luck you would be able to take the wrought iron section out, leave the posts alone, and that that would provide sufficient access to the pipeline if, if you've got 50 foot spaces between the, the posts that, that would allow you to get access to it. But we just wanted to make sure that that, that was clearly understood by all parties that the uh, pipeline is there. It's a little over three feet, or right at three foot from the surface, and it is fairly close proximity to the proposed fence line. So. Dean, this question might be for you, but am I right? This is a storm sewer pipeline, not a sewer pipeline. Yes, it's, it's, it's storm drainage. It carries runoff from the Ninth and Claflin intersection over to the Second Street. Slew. Not very likely to be an emergency repair that comes up right. in the middle of January or something like that. Right. It's not like a water line break or a, uh, a geyser caused by a, a faulty sewer. It is, it's a storm pipeline, so generally the repair and maintenance could be more scheduled or at least have more notice. And again, those things will all be addressed in an agreement between the City of Salina and Kansas Wesleyan. We, we would naturally like 
sure would be nice if that was a little further north, but uh, on the other hand, we're very glad it's there because we're going to be tying into that system ourselves with the uh, storm drainage system we've proposed for the uh, for the fields. So we're we're glad it's there. <laughs> I have one more fence question uh, on the northeast corner where the uh, field house and and locker rooms are. What happens to the fence? It's uh, the scale of the drawing we have is so small it's hard to tell. Does it does the fence go clear to the corner? at uh, Claflin and Osborne, or does it go around the, does it, it jog down in there? It, where, does, where does, it, go? it does both, sir. Oh. <laughs> um, we're going to have a, a fence. The fence will be at the perimeter of the property, but we're also going to be doing some internal fencing mm -hmm. uh, for the, uh, securing that portion of the site um, and restricting access to it from the field to the field house. So we want to be able to control that. Um, we're also going to have a pedestrian uh, fence, uh, if you will, a uh, serpentine type fence because, uh, as you may be aware, the university wants to share this facility with the, with the community and allow access to the field. But on, on event days and so on, and for security purposes in the evenings, we'll want to be able to uh, secure that fence also so we can restrict access to the site. Rick, could you speak a little bit to the what we've identified here is that this is the renovation of the field house with this being a, an initial addition. Are the, the dimensions of this pretty fixed? Is that a pretty fixed um, square footage and distance or is that somewhat um, up in the air at this point? Well, it's, it's, it's in the future so it's somewhat up in the air but we have, uh, we have identified that um, that that existing field house that's there now, we're going to basically uh, demolish it all the way down to the skeleton, that is to the framing members. And it's going to get an entire facelift, but we also need to have a larger space for, uh, to accommodate the home teams uh, when, they're, uh, when they're here on an event. And um, we needed a little more space there. Um, and, and then we want the capacity to improve upon that and add to that in the future. Um, as funding becomes available not only to the east but also to the north um, so that we can uh, provide um, more uh, services for the f that would strictly be for the for the field and for the sports complex um, so right now that the existing field house is primarily being used for the soccer teams and for the away football teams and then the uh, the new facility on the right is for uh, the home uh, football teams prior uh, pregame and halftime for halftime. So um, yes, we would like to be able to have the potential to expand on that in the future, as uh, hopefully as part of the same project that would allow us to expand to the north. Uh, I think, Dean, your specific question is the four feet, probably. Yeah, I just wanted to explain that when I st I started uh, doing the review and writing the report, the setback was ten feet. But because the right-of-way profile from Osborne went from a 40-foot right-of-way profile to a 46-foot right-of-way profile, then the property essentially got narrower by six feet and the right-of-way grew by six feet, which turned what was proposed as a 10-foot setback into four. So it, it wasn't anything that changed with the building. It's just that this line right here shifted back west by six feet in order to accommodate the 29 foot paving width and the five and a half curbside sidewalk. So the fence is five foot off the curb? The, the, this fence line will be five and a half feet west of the curb line for Osborne and then this addition is if built as proposed that would be four foot from the fence line. Good. That's exactly the question I had too. So it's approximately ten feet back from the street. Yeah. yeah, and so it's roughly the same distance. What moved was the the curb line of the street moved west to accommodate the paving width to allow for parking. Indeed, if I understood you correctly, uh, power poles can be moved, so that's going to be straight five foot sidewalk, no obstructions. Yes, we yes. we had some. There, there's an aerial or there's a photograph in your packet that shows a couple poles, and we had um, concern about that and the ability to put a sidewalk in, but we were informed that the, the poles are providing temporary power 
and will be removed and an alternate source of power provided so they will not interfere with the sidewalk. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I will remind everybody we're still in public hearing, so if any questions ever arise, we want to make sure that we do hear your voice. And hearing none, I will uh, close the public hearing, bring it back to commission for action and or discussion with city staff. We can talk to months ourselves. Any additional questions you have, um, we'll do that now. Dean, on the uh, traffic light there on Cloud in Osborne, the pedestrian crosswalk that exists, does that funnel pedestrians to the east side of Osborne where there is no sidewalk? or the west side of Osborne where there currently is no sidewalk? Well, there are some things that will change and Dustin has it blown up here yeah. for you. One of the things that was pointed out in Wilson Company's analysis is if Osborne is one way southbound, this need for a left hand turn lane will go away because you won't be able to turn left there anymore. So this will be reconfigured. Our what you see the pattern there is you have this crossing to here. I think what you're going to see is that that crosswalk will be right here and it will line up with that sidewalk. The signal will still function the same way, but instead of this being here, it will be over here and we will try to emphasize and reinforce that the crossing is on the uh, west side of the intersection and so that will function much better if it is there and then the uh, again all of the traffic will be southbound so um, people crossing this direction will be seeing any oncoming traffic or turning traffic but this is the configuration today this sidewalk will be here and we will want to reinforce that pattern by making the crosswalk on the west side of the intersection doesn't it make sense, Dean? And I don't know where that has to go, whether it's to go to engineering or, or what. But instead of now going left with that map, Dustin, if you have that turn back up, could that be then turned into left-hand turn into St. Mary's and Sacred Heart? Did that map go away, Dustin? Yeah, the, it just stopped working. Oh, it stopped working? Okay. <laughs> well, with that going, it turns left now. I mean, there's a huge buildup with people turning left into Sacred Heart. Coming from the east there, you could open that all up. Um, pass there and kind of swerve in there. I don't know whether that makes. I think that the, the width and the roadway is there. There's there's going to be need to have a general restriping of that whole intersection, and so that that would certainly be looked at. The the point being that the left turn stacking lane um, could be used for a different purpose because you're not going to have left turns from Cloud onto Osborne. The width is still going to be there, so I think it's a matter of restriping, and I think that city, city staff is going to need to work with Wilson and company on all the signage and, and restriping that will need to be done to uh, change the pattern on Osborne. The poles that are going to be r removed on the west side of Osborne are going where? There, we were of, of the belief that they were, they're basically providing power to the field house building and they will probably be removed in some sort of individual transformer okay. replaced. They are not, they're not neighborhood distribution lines. They only serve Kansas Wesleyan, so there, there's not a need for them to remain. Okay. And these, these, are the, these are the ones we were speaking of. Right. Not to change the subject. But I wasn't here at the last, at the first meeting. I apologize for that. Uh, on the railroad lease, did it say that there was no cars to be parked on the right of way on 4th Street? It, the lease does not say that, no. I, 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 for some reason, I thought I'd pick that up because that, I was wondering if that was the car part of the car. The, the, the railroad parking count. has held that view, but it is not part of the lease. Okay. The, the plan for this with the narrowing of the travel lanes on the east leg of northbound 4th Street that there would be no parking there but the
parking on the southbound leg would probably continue unchanged as it is today because there's no changes to that side. And that was considered as part of the parking number? No. That is just general on-street parking, but that is not that is not counted as Kansas Wesleyan's okay. parking. That's because I'm kind of thinking we're going to get to that thousand people in no time with a good stadium. So, and a winning team. You know, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Not that we're not winning. I just mean a winning team. You know, we're going to need the parking, and that's <laughs> is the church parking involved in this parking number? Yes. There, there are 170 spaces in the St. Mary's Elementary School Church parking lot, and those, these spaces right here, there is a shared parking agreement between St. Mary's and Kansas Wesleyan that allows this. Of course, it can be used by fans of Sacred Heart who are attending games there, but it can also be used uh, by people attending events at Kansas Wesleyan as part of a shared parking agreement. And how much space does Boo Hodges have there that he'd want to lease out? Do we know? I mean, he's got 40? That is not part of our number because there's no formal arrangement with that clinic property at this time. Okay. A thousand people would be tough to park. Well, I don't have a lot of heartburn with parking for events. I just went to a town east of us Saturday and there is no way that they have built <laughs> enough parking to take care of the almost 60,000 fans that were at that particular event. We should be so lucky <laughs> that we have to rent out our front yards on Saturday afternoon for people who want to come to our town. Now I used to walk two <laughs> miles from the campus on to the, to the ball game so I know that a lot of those people walk in. Wouldn't you like to have that problem? Yeah. Any other discussion or particular questions about the application? If not, the chair would entertain a motion. I would move then that we approve application PDD 132 with the st with the recommended conditions one through eight proposed by the city. Have a motion? Any discussion? Second. Anyone? Second. 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 Yeah, everybody. Everybody's second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor and a kid by saying aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you. We will move on. Um, item, item three, Mr. Chairman, is a companion item. It was the original item filed before we got to the plan development district, and it is a proposed replat of this property. And the primary driving force for that replat is um, to widen the north-south dimension of this block um, north-south by 10 feet by vacating 10 feet of Claflin Avenue and widening it 38 feet from the present 510 feet to 548 feet. And again, this, Dustin, if you could go back to that, this this was the original plat back in um, 1886, and the original plat at that time was that this was, this was just going to be a housing area, and Russell would be through, and there would be alleys and all of that, and that is actually what the plat looks like today. Today it's under one ownership, but it has 30-some odd mm -hmm. lots, and so the uh, proposal is to uh, take that, repackage it into one lot and block. And uh, if you recall, the very original plan called for the closure of the east leg of South 4th Street. And then um, the revised plan that you looked at in September, and on September 3rd, it didn't change the dimensions or configurations, but it did leave the east leg of 4th Street open to northbound traffic called for the fence to be erected on the east side, a seven to seven and a half foot buffer between a new curb line and the stadium plaza fence. But essentially this replat would take the 30 individual lots, plat it into one lot, and uh, the real thing that uh, staff, Kansas Wesleyan and Wilson Company have been working on is what is the final east-west number because that will determine how much area there is to work with and the final number is 548 feet from 
the east line of 4th Street to the west line of Osborne, and uh, that adds 38 feet of uh, usable space that will be owned and used by Kansas Wesleyan. So um, we have the 100-foot rail right-of-way, and we have a lease with the railroad that allows us to have our street in their right-of-way. We would be eliminating um, unneeded right-of-way for the east leg of 4th Street. The present right-of-way width for Claflin is 100 feet. That would be reduced to 90 feet by vacating um, 10 feet on the south. The right-of-way width for Osborne is 60 feet, and uh, we would be reducing that down to 48 feet. And when it's all said and done, the only um, change to the existing street and traffic circulation pattern being proposed is the narrowing of Osborne and the conversion to a one-way street. And at our September 3rd meeting, we were talking about no on-street parking and a 21-foot width. Now we are talking about a 29-foot uh, width, which is sufficient width for an emergency access lane and um, on-street parking. So we've talked about drainage. We know about the 42-inch uh, storm sewer pipe on the north side. Um, as noted, the plan is to drain um, this com <coughs> complex site into that storm pipeline and the engineering departments determined that this pipeline has adequate capacity to accept all the runoff generated from this block. Um, there are no utility improvements that would need to be made. Um, we had made mention of a possible need for a West Star power easement, but with the poles going away, there's no need for that. Um, we've talked about the proposed fence line and that's going to be addressed through a license agreement with the city. And so uh, the east 24 feet of right-of-way for 4th Street would be vacated and added to Kansas Wesleyan's holdings, and the west uh, 14 feet should read 14 feet of right-of-way instead of 18 for um, the Kansas Wesleyan holdings. And so in looking at the traffic flow, changes. You're to look at emergency vehicle access, traffic flow, and public safety and effect on future development patterns. Um, and you need to find that no private rights will be injured or endangered by the partial street closure um, on Osborne Street. And so you uh, table this or postpone consideration on September 3rd and continue the hearing to today on this replat and uh, the design team was asked to develop and look at different cross-sections for Osborne Street. And the one we brought forward today is a 29-foot street with uh, parking on the east side and the addition of a curbside sidewalk on the east. So um, there are no some minor physical change to 4th Street, but no change to the pattern there, no changes to the traveled way on Claflin, um, physical modifications to Osborne, and, and no changes to Cloud except for the things we discussed, which would change um, the striping at the Osborne-Cloud intersection. So we are, uh, on page 8 of our report, we're recommending approval of this replat with the, uh, the dimension proposed, which is 548 feet from east to west, and that the 10-foot uh, the vacated on Claflin be retained and shown as a drainage easement, which they have done, that the uh, fencing will be addressed through a license agreement with terms acceptable to the city commission, and that the right-of-way profile for Osborne will be 46 feet as depicted, and that Kansas Wesleyan will be responsible for making all physical modifications to Osborne Street necessary um, to convert it from two-way to one-way, and that restricted access be provided on Cloud Street and Claflin, meaning that, that we would have no, no driveways or, or future driveways on those frontages. So uh, 
we we believe that the plat submitted by Wilson and Company is in order and the the dimensions have stopped moving and we've got a block that's going to uh, provide 590 feet of north-south width and 548 feet of east-west width. So with that, we'd be open to any questions. Um, but this is where we started with the replat, and the real question was, what are the dimensions that Kansas Wesleyan is going to have to work with or work within? And those dimensions uh, with this plat would be 590 feet north-south and 548 feet east to west. Strangely enough, the, the copy of that that's in our packet only adds up to 544 feet east to west. Okay. If I can do simple math in my old age. Are you referring, see, to, the, are you referring see, to the plat? I'm referring to the what is apparently the plat, the same drawing that's up there. It shows 20 feet plus 510, which is and then plus 14. It, it depends. It, the world is not straight, and so it depends on so which. Is the north side longer it, than the bottom side? Yes. Okay. So if, okay, you, look, if, you, look, the if you look at is. the top side, that, that's where it's 548 okay. feet. And if, if we could make the world perfectly squared, that would work. But it, okay. we've got different dimensions at the south than we do at the north. I understand things not being square. Yeah, I've just been working in a hundred-year-old house today. <laughs> so we're uh, we're trying to make it as optimistic as possible. So we use the larger number. Okay. I just didn't look at all the fine print. Any questions for staff before we hear from the applicant, if need be? Hearing none, we'll move along. If the applicant would like to speak, uh, Mr. Thompson. I just briefly want to say um, this cleanup would be helpful, I think, as we all move forward to have this clearly done. Um, happy to entertain any questions, but want to thank you for your previous vote, but also want to take the moment to thank the staff uh, for their considerable time and effort with us. Having lived in many other communities, I have never found a city staff who was so willing to work with a client in this situation or a property owner to make this the best project it could be, and so I'm very appreciative to, to Dean and all the staff that have worked on this, so happy to entertain any questions. Any questions for applicant? Seeing none, thank you. Open it up for a public hearing. If anybody would like to uh, comment. Seeing none, I will uh, close the public hearing, bring it back for uh, discussion or action to the commission. Any questions for staff or discussion? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Love to hear it. I'll make a motion that we recommend that the proposed plat replat a block bounded by South 4th Street on the west, Claflin Avenue on the north, Osborne Street on the east, and Cloud Street on the south be approved, subject to the conditions 1 through 5 as outlined on page 8 in our packet. Need a second. Second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all approval say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Move on. Southern Matters, I want to make sure everybody got a chance to uh, be introduced to Matt Wagner, who is our new planning commissioner. He's been Speech. appointed to replace yes. Patrick Mikesell. He is one of our two out-of-city uh, representatives. Um, the other thing that we would uh, like to do is, or have you think about is that we think that the uh, best mechanism for creating a committee um, to study the parking lot surfacing would be not to have staff or anybody select anybody, but to just solicit expressions of interest from the community, which we will do, and then we will be bringing those to you um, to let you make appointments to that committee, but also be thinking in the back of your mind whether you as a planning commissioner would be interested in volunteering time and service to that because um, when we do do that, we'll be asking uh, you to either appoint or, or volunteer representatives of the Planning Commission for that. And uh, we will be meeting on November 3rd, but it will be a light agenda and we'll just have some cleanup items for you. 
Uh, for everybody watching us on TV, when will this go in front of the City Commission for approval for Kansas Wesleyan? The uh, Kansas Wesleyan items will be going to the City Commission on Monday, November 4th. Perfect. And so we will we will package together your recommendations and the minutes from today's meeting, and that will go forward to the City Commission on Monday, November 4th. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thompson and uh, Mr. Green. The correct for you guys' is participation. Everybody who showed up today in, in favor of doing that, thank you for your participation. Any other matters? Discussion? I yes. said one, just mentioning one thing. I, I'm not sure where we're at with this, and I've just lost track, but we one time were talking extensively about entryway enhancement to the city of Salina, and, and it's been a while since we've had any update on that, and I just thought some sometime along the way in the next three years, maybe we could get back to that. Well, <laughs> it's been one of my I, focuses. there's and one thing I also had on my list so. for other matters. The uh, Planning Commission members are formally invited to a joint meeting with the City Commission at 1 o'clock on Monday the 21st from 1 o'clock until 345. The uh, City Commission will be having a study session on the comprehensive plan and comprehensive plan implementation in this room at 1 o'clock and you will you'll be getting a reminder from Crystal on that but that will be an opportunity for planning commissioners city commissioners to be in the same room hearing the same things posing perhaps the same questions and gateways will be one of the items that will be on the presentation great thank you any other matters hearing none we're adjourned